bless you. I've already had four cups this morning. But I never say no. Couldn't do this job if you didn't like tea. How was she last night? We had a bit of a bad day yesterday. My fault. You don't have to explain. It's hard what you're going through. Anyway, she had some pain about midnight, so I gave her some morphine. And... Oh, she... Um, she wet the bed again last night. I don't mind, but she gets embarrassed when she wakes up. Was she asleep, or could she just not get out of bed? Dunno, I mean, I think she was just exhausted. She'd been up all night making these little videos for Bertie. Oh, that's a lovely thing to do. I could give you a bedpan or a catheter if she'd rather. Whatever, I mean, as long as she's comfortable. Morning. Morning, lovely. Sip of juice. Is it? Just after nine. Oh. I'd better get up there. Maybe it's later. Where's Bertie? Beth and Kirk have taken him out for a walk. Don't forget to give her the morphine when she needs it. We'll be back tonight. But obviously, call if you need. But take it easy, missus. And be kind to yourself. You're doing a great job. If only that were true. yourself even more. You know what I want? What? What do you want? A big bunch of flowers. That smell nice. So I feel like I'm outside. Consider it done. Have you been a good boy? Good as cold. We fed the ducks in the park, didn't we? Where's Daniel? He's out getting me some flowers. A bit late for a side present. Beth. I asked for them. You didn't have to forgive him. I did. I love Daniel, and I know he loves me. What happened with Bethany, it, it came out of grief and stress. I forgot how hard it's been for him. It's been harder for you. Has it? Seeing someone you love dying right in front of you. Don't use that word. Why? What do you want me to say, eh? Slipping away, deteriorating. I'm fed up of people skirting around that word. I'm dying. And I want Daniel to be with me till the end. Because he has been. He's made one. Mistake. One in three years. I'm not letting that ruin everything. 
you're a better woman than me. Mm. We all knew that anyway. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I need to sleep now. Should I get Bertie out of here? Daniel! What can I do? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. She shouldn't be in pain. Yeah, she's not most of the time. Come on, take this, it'll help. She shouldn't be in a hospice. She'll settle down. You're determined to make everything worse, aren't you? She should be being cared for by people who know what they're doing. She wants to be at home. No, she doesn't! I'm gonna get the doctor cut. Okay. You're all right. You're gonna be fine. I'll pass. Pain will pass. Beth's gone to get Dr. Gaddis. Why? She thinks that you need to be in a hospice. And she said that's what you want. Is it? I don't know. Don't stay here for me. If you want to be in a hospice, then... That's what we'll do. Whatever you want. Sorry to interrupt. Billy's here. Oh, no, she's, she's not up to visit us. I am. I want to see him. Hey. Could you give us ten minutes? Yeah. Yeah, Bert's due for a snack anyway. an envelope with instructions on for my funeral. I, uh, I don't want Daniel worrying about it or my Auntie Beth, so... Understood. I shall follow it to the letter. How are you feeling mentally? OK. I've been listening to them books and podcasts. Good. I'm not actually scared of dying anymore. I'm scared of leaving. What it'll do to Daniel and Bertie. And all the things I'll miss. But I'm not scared of the actual moment. You have know, seen, I've seen many deaths. Most of them, they've been extremely peaceful. Like going into a deep sleep, but not waking up. Exactly. I am a bit scared what happens after, though. Ah, well. I remember what you told me about that wager. Pascal. Yeah, well, it's better to believe in God just in case he exists. Yeah. And, well, if he does exist, I wonder what the afterlife's going to be like. Mm, well, I'm afraid that no one who's ever been there can tell us. What 
do you think? Well, uh, as a Christian, I've got my theories. None of them involve white clouds and angels playing harps. I like the way that, that Muslims describe their, their heaven as a garden. And there's some religions that believe in reincarnation. For me, personally, I think after death we... we become one with God in some way. But... What if it doesn't exist, though? And it's nothing but blackness. And there is a peace in nothing. You know, someone once told me that um, the afterlife, that's where the sinners go. The good people, they get the nothing. Immortality, that's the punishment. I hope God is a woman. Yeah, well, she very well may be. Mm. And that heaven's like a, a big, comfy cinema. Where I can eat as much popcorn as I want and not get fat. And on the screen, it's, it's all what's happening down here. I get to see Bertie growing up. I've always believed that we get to watch over our loved ones. I hope so. She's been in and out of sleep all morning. Um, only one bout of pain, which I gave her some morphine for. Yeah, the vicar Billy, he 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 came round earlier and um, well, she was fine, almost chatty, but obviously it's exhausted her. Sinead, has she been able to get out of bed? Uh, no. How's her breathing been? Well, well, we've not had that change that Jessica asked me to watch out for, so I mean, she's she's okay, right? She's pretty weak, Daniel. Yeah, I know. That's why we need to get her to a hospice. I think she may be too fragile to move. What do you mean? I worry about the journey. The stress it will put on her body. We don't want to risk her dying in transit. What are you talking about? She's not about to die. We're way off that yet. She's not the breathing. She's been talking. She was playing with Bertie earlier. We need to get her to a hospice. That's what she wants. She wants to be in a hospice. Oh. Hey? Oh, yeah. Oh. I want to stay. No. I want to... I want to spend my last hours in my own bed with you and Bertie. What are you talking about? These aren't your last few hours. I think you should call my mum. Anything else that I can do for her? She's well medicated. Just try and keep her comfortable. Um, how long do you think that she's got? Impossible to say. But I think you'll get a sense of when the time's near. And you know the signs to look out for. I think she's right, though, to want to say her goodbyes. Daniel! Did you call the hospice? I'm afraid she's too weak to be moved. What? She's asking for her family. Is she that bad? Oh, what do you care, bitch? I'm so sorry. Yeah, seducing a man whose wife's got cancer. I've been on the receiving end. There's no greater betrayal. I, I didn't seduce him. It wasn't like that. Oh, whatever. 
We've all seen you swooning around him. Everybody blames you, you realise that? I'd keep your head down if I were you. Well, better still, why don't you bog off? Leave her to die in peace. Why are you shouting at my grandchild? Well, I've certainly missed a lot. So you can see why everyone hates me now? No. No, quite frankly, I can't. It's a horrible situation for everyone. Daniel must be going through hell. You're fighting your old feelings, and yet you want to be there for him. And it all gets out of hand in a moment of madness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Thank you. The universe threw you together out of chaos. You had no control over the forces around you. You seem different, Gran. Well, been on a bit of a journey, love. I don't mean in terms of miles. How do you mean? Well, when I got to Thailand, I was lost. All that had gone on here. I had no idea who I was anymore. We all get lost sometimes. And then we find ourselves again. And you will too. And so will Daniel, eventually. We're all a lot stronger than we think we are. I hope so. You're chopping biscuits all over her. Well, it's your fault they're broken. I told you not to put the packet in the bottom of the bag. I don't know why you bought ginger nuts anyway. She doesn't even like them. I thought she loved them. It's custard cream she loves. All right, a biscuit's a biscuit. How can you say that? There's a world of difference. She's just awake. Hey. Hey, sweetheart. Do you want a ginger nut? No, Ta. Told you. How are you feeling? It's a stupid question. I'm OK. I'm fine. I just feel a bit tired, that's all. Can you help us up, please? Oh. Yeah, thanks. I know I look awful. Oh, sure, you look beautiful. You're right. I can feel what a mess my hair is for a start. Would you like me to brush it like I did when you were little? Would you mind? Where's your hairbrush? Hey, do you remember your girl's world? It was my girl's world first. <laughs> it must have been about 20 years old by the time you got it. Brittany. I called her Madonna. Gave her to a charity shop, didn't you? There's probably some little girl calling her Ariana now. You spent hours and hours doing her hair. I seem to remember a lot of clats. I remember once you asked me to give her a tattoo on the back of her neck. Mm. I did it in felt tip pen. He drew a spider. I was well annoyed. It was a flower. I mean, it might have looked a bit like a spider. <laughs> Remember the time that you walked out of that toy shop with that cuddly hippo? <laughs> Completely lifted it. That was our Craigie, not Sinead. Was it? And now he's the copper, the irony. How did I get that wrong? <laughs> Just like the biscuits. I am so sorry. I've been such a rubbish mum. Don't start this now. Hey. Hey, you haven't. <laughs> You were a great mum. <laughs> I had a lovely childhood. I was so happy. I 
felt well looked after and, and felt understood. And I got double the pocket money. Did you? You swore you wouldn't tell your mum I gave you cash. Hang on, you gave her extra pocket money? Only because she was so stingy. Well, no wonder she always had new things. I just thought you saved up. Your cheeky mare. Mm -hmm. Well, she was a teenager. She wanted her own clothes, not hand me down shell suits. Those shell suits were class. Hang on, did she get more pocket money than me? Oh, <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> it was such a long time ago. She needs a doctor. That's fine. It's just part of the breathing pattern. Jessica explained all of this. Because she's so deeply asleep, when a bit of saliva gets stuck at the back of her throat, she doesn't notice it. It's because she's so relaxed. But the noise, she sounds distressed. She's just breathing through fluid. She's fine. Trust me. Why should we trust you after what you've done? What has he done? Well, let's not do this here, all right? tomorrow when she's got more energy. Is that what you want? Mum, she's tired. We can all come back in the morning. I will let you know if anything changes. Bye then, sweetheart. I'll come back in the morning and I'll bring custard creams. to lose you yet. Yeah. 
Snuggles are just as good. Hey, he's been so good recently. Barely cried. Not with everything that's been going on. He's been the calm one. You're not a crier, are you? Hey, you're a smiler. That's true, actually. Even when he was in the incubator, he was a smiler. I look back smiling. Told myself that it was. Could have been wind. You're such a little miracle. I can face death. Because I know I did something important with my life. terrified of doing this on my own. You already do everything. You feed him, change him, get him off to sleep. Except when it comes to bath time, you're always the one to bath him. You need to get over your fear of that. You can't just flannel him like you've been doing when I've been too poorly. It was so much to worry about. Is it too hot? Is it too deep? Why have I splash him in his eyes? Or, God forbid, why have he slipped? It's dangerous. You've seen me do it a hundred times. Just relax. He's gonna miss you so much. He won't remember me. Of course he will. I'll just be someone on a video screen. He's too young. No, oh, he'll remember. He'll remember the feel of you. The way that you smell. The sound of your voice. And I'll talk about you all the time. In a way, I'm, I'm glad he's too young. Because he won't remember me being ill, dying. I'm glad about that. Remember when Bev told me about Deirdre? Oh, couldn't believe it. I don't. But it was so sudden, and she felt nothing. I suppose that's got to be better than knowing you're going to die. I remember how hard it was for Alma seeing a slow ending unfold in front of her. I 
for Roy, you know, with Haley. Well, at least you got to say goodbye. We never got to say goodbye to Mum. Yeah, I agree. It's hard for the people left behind. I mean, I crucified myself for not being there for her, not holding her hand, not being able to tell her that I love her. But, I mean, on balance, it was better for her. She had no pain, no fear, and it comforts me. I agree, Dad. I mean, I just want to have a heart attack, you know. Boom, I'm gone. Aidan was in loads of pain. We didn't know. And he died a long, slow death, and we didn't see it. All we got was a boom gun. Yeah, it was tough watching Dad. Now, that was a slow death. He knew his mind was failing him and his body would follow him. I like you, I crucified myself for not being there at the end, but at least you were. Although the irony's not lost, believe me. You know, it's a funny thing, death, isn't it? Whether it's sudden or you see it coming, it's a shock. And yet we see it all the time on films and television, usually horrible and grisly. But when it happens to us, we're completely unprepared. And like birth, the other inevitability of life, you know, we're guided through that, we know exactly what's going to happen, and we talk about it all the time. <laughs> we don't talk about death. A hundred years ago, it was different. There was death all around us, and we understood it was a natural part of life. But now that it's hidden, it scares us. Well, this is a cheery conversation. <laughs> Spend your life mourning me. Stop. I want you to be able to move on with someone else. Don't forget about me. Well, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> I am so pleased I came up with one before I pegged it. <laughs> oxymoron. <laughs> I feel like I've aged 50 years in six weeks. years with you. I imagined we'd have four kids. Four? <laughs> Boys. There's too many girls in my family. We'd live in a thatched cottage in the country with a field and dogs. I thought that we might have two, one of each. And we'd live in one of those warehouse conversions, you know, in Castlefield glass and exposed brick, maybe a balcony, and a parrot. Parrots are cool. I want a divorce. <laughs> Yeah. I can feel the 
tiredness getting thicker and blacker. I don't want it to cover me yet. Neither do I. traditionally gathered. We're just here to support each other. How is she? She's very tired. We're going back in the morning. Pull up a pew, Vicar. Drink. Have some of this wine, Reverend. I'll get a glass. Remember that time you first asked me for a drink in that club with Sinead? How can I forget? I'm sure that made me do it. She refused to believe I was gay and a vicar. I still don't. <laughs> First time I ever saw her dance. No. I've never seen anyone dance like she need. It's kind of. <laughs> no, it's a bit more like this. <laughs> With a little bit of this thrown in. Saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen her do it to the radio. It's like. <laughs> it's like a jumper in a washing machine, isn't it? <laughs> We're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh-oh, the snowstorm. A swirling, whirling snowstorm. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no. We've got to go through it. <laughs> We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh-oh. A cave. A narrow, gloomy cave. Oh, we can't go over it. And we can't go under it. I know. We've got to go through it.
She went peacefully. We need to call Dr. Gaddis. I'll do it. I'm so sorry. I've never loved anyone before. I can feel. No one will ever come close. The tightness. Oh, go. Get in. Take a walk. Not yet. Not yet. Daniel. Daniel. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to take him or not. No, I want him with me. Of course. I can confirm the time of death. 1735. Look, if there's anything I can do, anything. I'm so very sorry for your loss. Would you like me to say a prayer for Sinead, Daniel? Yeah, I'm sure she'd like that. Dear Lord. Peaceful passing of Sinead. We thank you for her life, for her kindness, her humor, compassion, and bravery, for the love she shared with her family and friends, the joy she brought into all of our lives. And we ask that you be with us now. To guide us in our pain. And our grief. And help us comfort each other. Strengthened by the knowledge of your love. Knowing that Sinead is not lost to us, merely separated for a while. As she finds rest and wholeness in your loving arms, until one day we may be reunited with her. In everlasting peace. Amen. Right. I think it's dreaded bath time, don't you? Yeah. You want bubbles, eh? I think you do. What about your rubber ducky, too? You know how much you like him? And your little octopus? Now, I don't want any wriggling. This is the first time that I've done this, OK? And I won't be as good as your mum. But I am going to do my best. <laughs> yeah. So I just shout if there's anything that's not good enough. And I'm sure that you will. I'm sure you'll make a big old fuss. 
Just like you do when I push you too fast in your posture. If you've been affected by Sinead and Daniel's story, you can go to itv.com slash advice for support information. Next tonight, it's Vera. <laughs>